Okay, our Hangout on Air is live. Just adjusting my levels here. Uh, I am not seeing the email go out yet for the members of the class that we're going to join here. So I'm a, I'm a little concerned about that. So we don't have anyone who has joined via webcam just yet. My hope is that the uh, that email will go out soon. Uh, let me just send that again, just to confirm it. Help session starting. Go ahead and leave any questions you have. There's a Q&A panel. If you're watching this on YouTube, I actually recommend you go over to Google Plus, do a search for Curtis Judd. Uh, there you will find the link for this Google Hangout on air. And there you can submit your questions. Is that Mark? Hello, Curtis. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good, you? Good. I guess the email did make it out after all. It looks yeah. good. Okay. How was your five o'clock in the morning session the other day? The five o'clock in the morning session, I think, was very good. We had a lot of people join. Oh, um, good. It was. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm. I am. I think I'm a morning person, but I think six a.m. is usually my morning start time. <laughs> I was a little early, but we we made it work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll give uh, folks just a couple minutes here to kind of join up. How how have things been for you? See, it looks oh good. Like, yeah. Looks like you got your rig worked out. I got, I got my rig worked out, and uh, I did one little test uh, to make sure that it worked. So very good, very good. It looks like we have a couple other people joined. Ken just joined, and Bob just joined. Welcome, guys. We see your pictures don't quite hear you. <laughs> yeah. Bob, it looks like you're attempting to talk, and I hear something very, very faintly. Might need to gain up a little bit on the mic there. All right, well, let's see if we've got any questions coming in. Yeah. That's what I've always had. It seems like, you know, people are trying to not go that way. Is that you, Bob? Looks like we're hearing you now. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Looks like here on the webcast, we've got Mark, we've got Ken. Hello, Ken. <laughs> uh, Bob is, uh, we, I think we heard Bob a second ago. And then we also have Ahmed. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you here. Um, how are things going? Who, who has uh, anything they'd like to ask or to share or challenges they're up against? I'm doing okay. Ken's doing all right. All right. I uh, <laughs> found out that uh, padding makes all the difference in the world. You know, curtains and oh, towels yeah. and drapes and astonishing. It's astonishing difference. It does make a big difference. Uh, so, especially if you're shooting in a house or actually most uh, 
I find in most offices too. Although in the offices of eight, you at least have typically the really low pile carpeting that helps a tiny bit. They typically have acoustic ceiling tiles that helps a little bit, um, but they still got plenty of hard walls. And <laughs> having a blanket or two in your trunk when you go to do those gigs sure makes a difference for sure. So good deal. What was that? What were the circumstances? Are you shooting at a home, at a, an office, at a somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I have a home office, and uh, I have a very low hard ceiling and hard walls all around me and I've got beautiful plate glass windows along one side that uh, I just pulled the curtains the, the the shades down over the wind down across the windows and said you know quality went up you know and I, was, I was hanging curtains and pulling you know, towels you know all my, <laughs> it, was, it was I was making some progress but when I pulled the the blinds down over the the uh, plate glass windows that was bam that was the winner that was it okay yeah Good so uh, I think I got the uh, I think I got the reverb and the echo covered. And uh, last night I played with uh, Audacity and their DSing tool. Okay. Uh, for sibilance, and that seems to be uh, pretty cool. So uh, I've got some good I got some good test audio clips, and I'm ready to actually start doing something. Good deal. Glad glad to hear that. So um, I haven't used the DSer in auditions. So was it pretty straightforward? Did you have to tweak things quite a bit to get it where you wanted it. Well, I'm using Audacity. Sorry, Audacity. Yeah. Right. The free, uh, free sound editor for uh, from GIMP. Um, actually, I'm not sure I have it working. The documentation wasn't great, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, there's I haven't been through all the help videos on 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 the DSing tool. Uh, the uh, the doc yeah. that does exist was not written by a native English speaker, so right. <laughs> so it's, so it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the the demo the demo guessing tool is fantastic. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm getting some I'm echo getting through some echo through one of us here. One of us here. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, could it be me? Could it be me? Could be you if you try and mute. Try see how that does. does. Uh, let me mute. Let me mute. There we go. There we go. No, I'm still getting it, Mark. <clears throat> How do I mute my mic then? Let's see. I can do it here. Let's see if that helps. There we go. Now I can't hear you, though. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Let me know if you're when you're ready to say something. There we can. You know, if you, there should be if you if you go up to the top of the screen, a little uh, control panel should come down. You'll have a little mic with a line through it up top there. Let me go to my mixer here and see if I can. Hold on, I can see that. Do it here. There you are. Now I can, that, I can hear you. Oh, there's a little panel at the top there, but it disappeared a couple of minutes ago. Oh, okay. 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 Well, Mark, why don't you tell Mark, us a little bit about, um, about what um, you've been working on? I know you've been, I know you've been working on some projects. projects. Where are you at? Where are you? Uh, basically, um, what I have is a, a consultant who's uh, doing uh, uh, counseling uh, by uh, Skype actually around the world uh, on a variety of <coughs> very uh, difficult issues and so she's putting together a series of five and looks maybe more uh, five and ten minute um, discussion items a little quick TED talk kind of things um, and uh, so we're uh, so I've done two of them now one of them I did uh, using the Canon 6D recorder which was not great uh, even though, and then uh, so then I went out and bought a bunch of equipment, including the Tascam VR60 D Mark II and, and some microphones. And uh, <clears throat> so the last time I was just just got getting my hands around those. So I um, I didn't record on that, but I did use the preamps and all the mixing uh, and the better microphones, and that made a huge difference. And so, but basically, they're they're in a series of places in a home. Uh, heavy carpeting, very tall, you know, 25 foot ceilings. So I haven't had any trouble with reverb. Uh, I had a little trouble with background noise until I realized you have to turn off the refrigerator and the air conditioning. <laughs> and uh, 
So that, that made a difference, but it, it's been quite good, and I've been using a 200 millimeter lens on my 6D, so I'm about, uh, I don't know, six feet away from her. Uh, and so uh, that's reasonable enough. I use a low value wireless, and now I have the, and that new uh, Rode uh, NGT2 microphone, and so I'll be uh, using that, and we're going to do one of those very shortly. So uh, I'm quite pleased with the sound so far. Her editor adds music and titles and whatnot, and um, and so I've been sending her ProRes 2 files, and she seems to be happy with those. And uh, so the first video has uh, already gone up to over 1,000 uh, views. So. Oh, great. Great. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, so it seems to be getting better, and uh, so <clears throat> I've got, you know, I, I bought lights. I, got, I, I do photography, so I got the, the lighting thing came very quickly. Uh, the sound was another matter completely. <laughs> and now I've been looking at saying, oh, I wonder if there's any value in spending money on uh, video recording equipment, like getting a better camera and getting uh, you know, that Shogun. And I, I, to be honest, I don't think so. I mean, I think most people view these things on their iPhones or iPads, and I'm not sure they're going to 4K is worth <laughs> worth the effort. It's really very expensive. I, it would probably be 10 grand by the time all was said and done. So. Yeah. There's always some back and forth on, you know, thinking on, in terms of, you know, 4K. Um, but if your client is happy, I don't know. It's it's a tough one. I've I do have a Panasonic GH4 that I shoot with, and it's it's been working really nicely for me. Honestly, my clients don't ask for 4K. They they don't. Um, you know, most of them. A couple of them understand at least what that is. A lot of them don't even understand what that is. Um, so it's it's kind of a funny thing where. Um, I, I shoot in 4K, but I'm delivering in HD, so I, I definitely hear where you're coming from on that point of view. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if, if at some point if I decide to do other kinds of videos, but for, for a whole series of head and shoulder ones that are being used the way they are, I think that they, the video <clears throat> the video portion of the recording is probably good enough, and the audio portion is getting better. And the next thing to do is do a little bit more Manipul color manipulation and post, so I can get the color balance a little better. And it's pretty close now, but <clears throat> I have color chips and whatnot, so I can do you know matching to those. And uh, but I uh, I, never, I never worked with uh, what do they call the three color panels um, array something arrays. <clears throat> so that's that's another learning experience. Anyways, that's me. <laughs> that's coming up. Very good. Bob, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, I, I have a GH4 as well. Uh, also shoot with the T4i. I've got two of those. And um, wife and daughter are doing podcast. I've got one coming up. We've got uh, a PR40 mic, two NGT2s, and then several other uh, mics. And we're in that testing mode. Uh, the wife and daughter are doing some videos for their business, and they're sitting side by side. Um, at a stand-up desk or uh, an adjustable desk. Uh, we've got a room in the house that's got a green screen and then backdrops as well. So uh, listening in, watch the videos, to, to listen in on them to um, find out what would work best. Got an H4N and a Tascam both. Um, so really trying to figure out what mics that I've got that I could use with them sitting side by side. Do I use both the NGT2s or do I use the PR40 and an NGT2 or set it up above them both and just use the one? How close are they sitting? Um, side by side. So pretty much shoulder to shoulder? Uh, yeah, there may be 8 to 12 inches between them. Okay, okay. Uh, you can well, often with that NTG2, which is actually a mic I shot with quite a bit, it has, for a shotgun mic, it's actually not the tightest pickup pattern. It's actually a fairly generous pickup pattern, if you will, which, of course, is a plus and a minus. It's nice because you probably could get away with that. You may have to back it up just a little bit, try to stay within 90 centimeters, but um, that's actually worth a test, I think, to see if that one could do. The, the problem with, it's always nice to have isolated tracks for each of the people speaking, if you can, because if something... You know, funny something funny goes on. Um, it's a little bit easier to kind of impose to be able to manage them separately if you have to. Um, 
but if you've got two, I would I would aim, I would aim to do both, and I would I would probably try to set them up above, kind of pointed, almost like in an X configuration. So one at one person, one at the other. That way you get those nice isolated tracks and and be able to post process that pretty straightforwardly. Okay. Now, well, we've got arms, and um, right now, one likes the look of the PR40 better than the NGT2, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hey, come on, stop it. It's about sound. It's about sound, yeah, and and that could be part of your test too. Is play back for them the sound you're getting on each of them. But the trick with the PR40, which is a great mic by the way, um, is that it's a cardioid, so you're going to have to get in a little bit closer to to manage the room, and that may be too close to really work in a video kind of scenario. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You know, it's worth a try. But um, I think they'll find the they'll sound they'll sound pretty good on an NTG2, even though they may not like the look of it as much. <laughs> well, that's what they've been using, and then uh, at the podcast movement, uh, my wife won her microphone, so oh, okay. she wants to make good use of it because it's more expensive. <laughs> Fair enough. And, um, you know, there's also, in some cases, for podcasting in particular, sometimes people will just take the, that mic and have it in the frame. You know, you see that on the late night shows as well. They've got a mic in there. I know they're not micing from that mic. Right. It's within the frame. So <laughs> there's an option as well. That's funny. Which do you prefer, the Tascam or the, the uh, Zoom H4N? Um, of those two, um, I've actually got both of them right here. Got our the H4N and the Tascam. I think the Tascam usually produces a cleaner signal, so I typically will use this Tascam over the Zoom. Um, the Zoom, I actually, it's funny, I had a friend who is a photographer, wanted to start doing some video. He bought this. Uh, two years later, he realized, I have never used that thing, so he just gave it to me. <laughs> um, but I, but in the in the side-by-side -side comparison, I found the Tascam actually produces cleaner sound, less noise. So less of that to deal with in post. Well, I'll say, Mark, when you were talking a second ago, um, I was able to find a, a kit together that had the H4, uh, the uh, GH4 Panasonic mirrorless camera, an NGT2, and it was about twenty-three hundred dollars worth of stuff. And B&H Photo had it for fifteen ninety-seven back in early April of this year. So, so it is amazing. amazing. That is a, that's a pretty good deal, <laughs> for sure. For sure. I've not seen it since. So, but it had it had the Tascam, the camera, um, the NGT2 batteries, and several other things for fifteen ninety seven. And when I looked at all the things individual. I'm like, it's a mistake. They're not going to ship it and order it, and um, they did. I asked them about it, and they said it was a, a show special. Hmm. Okay, so probably during NAB that they were doing that? Yeah. Uh, in April? Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Um, how is uh, in the room, what kind of room are you recording in there, Bob? What, uh, what What's your setup for that? Uh, it's a bedroom that is uh, 10 by 12. Um, I do have a double window, and I've got a lot of, uh, I bought not the cheap uh, moving blankets that you can get at Harbor Freight. I looked at those, and they were too thin. I would have had to double them. Uh, not, it just wasn't beneficial. Um, I had a moving van before from a place called On The Move, and they sold me a bundle of, I don't know if there were 12 or 20 in it, but they were $200 shipped to the door, and uh, they seemed to be working fine. Okay, good, good. That's nice uh, when you can buy, you know, that's less than a microphone there. <laughs> so put those NTG2s to use and uh, put those blankets up. It's a good, good combination. Good deal. Thanks, Bob. All right, we've got Carlos, and we also have Ahmed. We see you now. It's good to see you there. And we have, is it Malte? Is that how you say your name? Yep, that's right. All right. Can how you hear you? me now? Yeah, we can I'm hear I'm pretty you. good. Sound good. Sound good. Pretty good. 
tell us, um, about, tell us about where you're at. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty new to this uh, compared to probably all of you. Um, and I'm about to be dispatched to China um, to document uh, environmental projects across China. And really, I'm not really supposed to do any, uh, I'm not hired to do any sound work, um, but I'd really like to use my iPhone to document all these uh, places that I go to. And uh, the issue is over the past two years, I've tried to do that with my iPhone, and I tried to attach uh, um, an NTG3, I believe, to it using uh, an iRig Pre, mm -hmm. um, and that really didn't work out at all. Um, so I had this horrible, horrible hissing noise uh, throughout all my uh, recordings, and I just couldn't figure it out. I watched your uh, <laughs> uh, your videos. Uh, I took your course, and I finally figured out what it was, uh, which was fantastic, by the way. Um, Thanks. And then I was just wondering. Um, I kind of realized I the Zoom Five seems to do really the job that I need it to do, um, a mobile recorder. Um, and I've been looking at um, my options here. The problem is that I'm not going to be um, having another person with me, so I don't have a sound person. I don't have. I'm going to be completely on my own, and I'm just going to have. I'm probably going to have a tripod for the iPhone to mount it on, um, and then I'm going to have well the Zoom Five recorder. And I'm currently thinking. Uh, I mean, there's the SGH6 add-on for the Zoom Five, like the um, shotgun microphone that you can attach directly to the Zoom Five, right. or I could have a Rode NTG2 or three or something like that. Um, and I'm currently thinking, in terms of technique and product, um, you know, one of the two, how I would best do this. So I could have a lavalier microphone, of course, that I could attach to uh, the person I'm going to be interviewing, or I could, I just, I guess, have a shotgun microphone that I could just going to be pointing at them. And so the iPhone is going to be video recording, and I'm going to be holding the Zoom 5, I guess, and having my um, earplugs in and earphones in and basically just recording um, what people say and trying to get the sound levels right. Um, and I'm currently just trying to figure out without, I don't have a huge budget, I don't have much time, I, I have to get it right the first time. So this is not really the best of conditions, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and I have no prior experience, and I'm currently just thinking um, what you would recommend, uh, whether I should get a lavalier and a shotgun microphone. Um, and, um, and if I did get a shotgun microphone, I guess I would be since I'm not going to be standing there like this, it would be going from below, I guess, not boom, going from below and and trying to get the sound levels right. And how I would do that, especially in the street setting when there's a lot of sound behind the people. Okay, those are yeah, you have those are good questions. I think a couple of couple of thoughts come to mind. So I I will uh, I'll confess two things. Number one, lavalier microphones are not my favorite. I, I like to avoid sure. them when I can. Sure. <laughs> but the reality is, is that sometimes you need to use them. The, the recent corporate piece that I finished, we had to use them. I didn't have um, the time, unfortunately, to, and I didn't have enough, um, you know, I didn't have the, the budget to bring along another person and actually sure. do the booming. So I okay. ended up going with lavalier mics. In that case, we were using the Roadlink wireless, and yeah. uh, it ended up working pretty well. Um, I had to do Clean up on a, a couple of them, but if it sounds like you're going to be mainly out in the street, just sort of interviewing people, spur of the moment type of thing. Yeah, is that fair? Okay. Well, that that's going to be one, and the other one is going to be indoors in a fairly controlled environment, probably an environment mostly of my choosing. Okay. I suppose. Okay. Um, okay. There, there are, yeah, there are a lot of directions you can go. I, I don't have experience with that particular uh, shotgun add-on for the Zoom H5 yeah. and the H6, so I don't know exactly how that one compares to others. My suspicion is that it's probably pretty decent for, you know, its price. I assume it's about a two hundred dollar ish yeah. type yeah. of that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, that that one's going to probably be pretty convenient for you because I I would have to imagine that at least when you're out on the street are these people that you're going to essentially walk up to and start talking to and, or is this are these people that are going to be with you in your group and and they already know they're going to be on camera what, what? Uh, I I think it's mostly going to be people that are with me so it's going to be uh, people who work on these environmental projects uh, and they know that I'm going to be interviewing them, but I, in order to get really good pictures, I don't want to just interview them in their offices. I want to go out and actually interview them right next to the 
projects and, and the activities okay. that they're uh, working on. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay. Um, whew, wow. Wow. The because they're they're here here are the challenges with each of them just so just we kind of yeah. lay those out. Number one, I think lavaliers are nice. Are if if it's okay for your particular pieces to have the lavalier mic showing, I find that's actually the easiest way typically to use lavaliers. If you have to hide them, things get a lot more complicated a lot more quickly. And in fact, that's the next segment in the training course I'm working on is hiding lavalier mics. I just got in. Um, I've used these before. These are the Rycoat undercovers. Okay. They're kind of nice because what they are is. Uh, Sort of a two-sided adhesive, and you can actually just attach it to skin, or you know, like right underneath the shirt. You literally just press the microphone up against that, and then it has a little sort of felt cover that you adhere on top of that. So these actually work pretty well. I've used the Rode Invisalov before. Um, they don't work quite as well, and they tend to leave residue. At least the adhesive that comes with it leaves residue on people's clothing, so I've, okay. I've shied away from that a little bit. Um, I find actually those work okay if I'm just using gaff tape. So instead of using the adhesive they include, I just use a gaffer's tape to tape it to the person, and that works pretty well. Um, so that's going to be a little more complicated, and I would highly recommend if you're going to go that route that you probably want to get some good practice <laughs> working out your technique on how to hide those. If you're just going to put them on the outside, that tends to work pretty well. Um, even if they move around a little bit, you don't typically have problems. But if you hide it and they start moving around, um, things can get dicey pretty quickly. You'll get the clothing rubbing across the microphone, and that's not going to sound as good until you get that technique worked out. So that's that's the lavalier side. Um, and then we can talk about specific lavalier mics. Um, you know, there's you could go the wireless route. You're going to spend more money that way. Um, but then you have the freedom of being able to walk around a little bit more without people tripping over each other and cables. And, and, yeah. and that, that actually, um, you know, as, as funny as that sounds, that's a, like a really practical consideration. <laughs> like, um, yeah. you don't want someone walking just two feet too far that direction and suddenly your whole tripod comes tumbling down with the camera on it. Sure. Or the, the phone on it, so um, that's one consideration. I would also so so let's pause there. Let's let's talk about shotgun mics for a second. The nice thing about a shotgun mic um, is, of course, that if you're a little bit more spur of the moment, um, you have some you know there, there's some good things about that um, in terms of being able to hold it up. But if you're if you're also operating camera, things get complicated there pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I mean that's why that's what I was really thinking I would I would mount uh, the iPhone on a tripod um, as, as often as I can and just leave it there and, and and record the sound completely separately so I wouldn't okay. also like like you recommend I wouldn't use I'm really disappointed with the uh, preamp of the iPhone I mean it's really uh, not delivered whatsoever uh, so I would really just use the iPhone for video and just use uh, uh, the zoom for for the sound and I guess that's sort of in my price range the the thing is just I have no idea how a lavalier, for example, performs in terms of um, a very loud noise environment next to a street uh, as opposed to, let's say, a shotgun mic. And I do understand that they're directional, like, you know, and, and then you would sort of hold it in a way that you wouldn't hold it directly towards the head of a person, right? So, and then you would pick up all the sounds from the street, but you would either hold it either that way, right, or, or somewhat below, so you would be not be picking up all the other sounds, right? Right, uh, right. And then you yeah. would try to control the sound, right, and the gain a little bit while you do it, I take it, right? <laughs> right, yeah, it, for sure. And, and the, um, you know, the trick is, is I find, and, and I, it, when you're operating as a one-man band, I find that I typically don't even have the capacity to do any sort of mixing. Like, I okay. a level set, and I... And okay. that's that's all I can do there. <laughs> Maybe sure. some superhuman people can do more than that. I, I don't find that I can. But what I'll typically end up doing at that point is really just focusing on getting the boom okay. pointed in the right direction. Okay. Um, what I found coming from below on shotgun mics is it, it can work okay, but then if you've got air traffic and things like that, then then you've got even more oh. going on with, with that. Okay. Um, and in fact, out on really noisy areas, the even though most lavalier mics are omnidirectional, yeah. Um, there are some, they don't, because they're kind of tuned to work so close to the sound source, like literally on the chest of the sound source, they, yeah. they do a pretty good job of rejecting a lot of the sound around them. And so even mm -hmm. on noisy streets, for example, I remember uh, Mark Wallace, who is a guy who 
works with, he's, I think he's based down in Phoenix, Arizona, but um, he also works with Adorama. He did a piece on YouTube that I saw not too long ago where he actually compared, um, obviously, the camera mic versus an omnidirectional lavalier mic, and, the, and then he also compared a cardioid lavalier mic. I would stay away from cardioid lavaliers generally just because they're pretty complicated to manage. Um, you've got to get it pointed just exactly right. They don't do well hidden under clothes. Um, they don't generally sound as rich. But the omnidirectional mic did really, really well. It, from what I could hear in that particular test he did, it did just as well as the cardioid in terms of rejecting the sound from the street around him. And he had the way he had yeah. it set up is the camera was facing him. Behind him was a major street and mm -hmm. actually sounded pretty good. Yeah, um, did a nice job. So um, I think from for ease of use, especially if the people are going to be walking around, um, I don't usually recommend this, but I typically probably well, I don't because I don't love lavaliers. <laughs> but in that particular case, it may be the easier option for you. Yeah, and I mean the one thing I haven't really been able to figure out, and I don't want to hijack the show. Maybe other people have questions, so you just uh, stop me, right? But I thought I'd take the opportunity now before I, I get sent out. But um, there's the NTG2 and NTG3, and then there's like with and without um, battery, I guess. Uh, and then there's microphones that can go up to what six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and maybe more. And and they're all shotgun mics, and they pretty much all look the same to me. And of course, they have slightly different um, uh, stats and what I'm trying to do is is I'm mostly trying to get really as good sound as I can without any hissing. That's what's really important to me. So I'm not an audiophile per se, but I hate the hissing thing and and I just um, I want to upload them in HD to YouTube, right? So that they're not going to be it's not going to be broadcast quality, something crazy. It's going to be aired on on TV or some cinematic. Uh, environment. So right. the question is, when I get an NTG two or three and four and, and the plus and what have you, like, you know, what do I get? <laughs> yeah, Th those are good questions. And I think so. I have experience specifically with the NTG two and the NTG four plus uh, on the roadside. Okay. Uh, so that's the difference between about a two hundred seventy dollar US mic and a four hundred dollar US mic. I think the big difference for me is not it, so that so the NTG4 Plus is slightly quieter, so there's slightly less hiss. Um, it has that built-in lithium-ion batteries, which last for 50 hours. In my testing, I haven't actually left it on for 50 hours to make sure it lasts that long, but it it does seem to last. But the four plus, right? The, the four plus. Excuse me. Yes, the four yeah, plus. Sure. Um, so that that. Uh, it does seem to be holding up. It just seems to be trending that way. It's holding up, and it's. I think it will power for a good long time. So that you know, if you're traveling, that may be a consideration as well. Um, okay. So you're not going to hear a huge difference in terms of the audio quality between the two. They do sound a little different. I did do a, a comparison of those two some time back, and you can go yeah. listen to that if you're interested. Yeah. But um, I think the biggest difference between those two is that the noise floor was a little bit more manageable on the NTG4 plus. So okay. if that's, you know, if, if that's important to you, okay. then that's a consideration there. Okay. Uh, you know, and then it, once you start getting up into, you know, I've used a Sennheiser MKH416, which is kind of a, uh, for a long time has been a standard shotgun mic on a lot of even higher budget films. And um, I don't know, it becomes pretty subjective at a certain point. Um, a lot of people like the 416. I thought it was fine. I found that Sennheiser microphones, for my tastes, um, tend to be a little on the bright side, which means that they're going to emphasize the, a lot of the higher frequencies. And in a lot of cases, they end up sounding very kind of sibilant to me, even for people that don't have particularly sibilant voices. And I actually found, you know, I'm actually doing a review or, you know, just kind of working with on a review of the Sennheiser AVX. And it comes with a their MKE2 lavalier mic. Mm -hmm. um, which is their more expensive kind of higher end mic, and I find that it's very sibilant as well. Not not in love with it. Okay. Um, so really, I think what it probably what you want to do is go listen to some samples from the mics you're considering buying, and just just make sure you sure. like that sound. It's kind of okay. kind of subjective. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks. Those are good questions. That was a tough one. You almost stumped me, and actually, maybe you did stump me. I'm, I'm curious actually to see. Um, you know what direction you end up heading, and, and yeah, absolutely, yeah, because that'll that'll be a challenge. And I think you know if you what, once you get the system down, once you you know kind of hit your stride, I think you'll do fine. It, it's just a matter of you know 
you've got some knowledge in your brain now. You know, you know how to troubleshoot problems. You got that iRig pre working. Yeah. I would take that with you just as a backup. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're able to get that to the point where it's not doing too much hissing. So um, it's yeah. always good to have backups. Take take the backups if you if you've got them. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Fantastic. Good deal. Jeez. All right. All right. Who else has got uh, thoughts or questions? Places they're stuck. We'd love to. We've got a whole crew here. Ahmed, do you have anything you wanted to say? Um. Yeah. Sure. Um. Can you hear me? Yeah. You sound great. You sound like you're uh, in a studio. You actually look uh, like you're in a studio. Um. It's actually my bed my bedroom slash studio. So <laughs> kinda. Um. Basically, I, I do uh, event coverage. It's a hobby kind of thing for uh, gaming events. And um, the thing is, um, there's a lot of scenarios that can, can go on. For example, one scenario is um, playing the game and talking. So you have no hands to hold a mic. So I, I typically use the... Uh, I used to use the giant squid um, way back. And uh, I just switched it now to the road link. And uh, it's... Very convenient, but I'm facing issues. I, I feel like it's picking up a lot of noise from the event because it's usually really loud. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on, but I feel like it's, it's picking more noise than the giant squid for some reason. Maybe some configurations on the GH4, the road link that I need to fiddle with, but I face issues with that. And uh, the other thing was that the um, uh, wireless mic, I needed an you know, uh, kind of an SM57 or, or whatever mic I'm, I'm carrying. I want a, a wireless kind of setup. Um, if you remember, I sent emails back and forth with you, and then Rode came up with the actual product exactly right. for what I was looking for, uh, <laughs> the news shooter. So that's good. Yeah, it would be great if they, you know, that's going to be a while. Did they, did they say when that one's going to hit the market? I think they were saying November, so we've still got another month and a half-ish or so. Yeah, and, and the main question I'm asking is, what's the price? And they keep saying, oh, they, you know, wait, we're going to announce it sometime soon, and I'm still waiting. I don't know how much the price is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess, we can come back and revisit this and see how close I was, but I'm going to guess probably, I'm going to guess 150? 500. 500? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean for the individual, individual XLR unit. That's it. Oh, 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 that one. Okay, the one that you can plug into a like an iPhone yeah. type thing. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, because you can you can mix and match. Uh, I think the units, the receiver and the tra uh, transmitter. So I'm I'm thinking the transmitter for the XLR. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. okay. 150. We'll cross our fingers. Maybe it'll happen. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> So, so tell me about the, tell us a little bit about the Roadlink. So you've got the Roadlink going. Um, yeah. What uh, what kind of things do you feel like you're struggling with on the Roadlink? There, you said something about it feels like it's picking up a lot more noise than you like. Yeah. See, I, I didn't do a direct comparison. Um, last year, I went with the uh, Giant Squid and um, my H2N, mm -hmm. and that was my wireless kit, kind of you know, put in your pocket and just use the Giant Squid. It was it was not picking up noise. It was holding up really really well actually to the events noise. But this year when I took the um, uh, road link and I was directly plugged in the GH4, it, it felt like it was picking up noise. I don't know if the event was just plain noisier. I was trying to avoid noises by kind of putting my back to the speakers, you know, uh, blocking the noises with my back at least. It, it was still picking up a lot of noise, and and actually some of the viewers did complain that they couldn't hear me as well. Uh, which never happened before with the giant squid. It was always picking up the noises, uh, just my my voice and not the noises around. So I'm I'm gonna fiddle around with it. I'll I'll send you an email on that maybe the yeah. videos and you can check it or something. Yeah, definitely glad to do that. And you know what's interesting about um, one what kind of the thought that's kind of spinning in my brain right now is I I wonder if it's the preamp on the GH4. So when I've recorded with the GH4 in the past, I've noticed it seems like it has a lot more high-end sparkle. It, it tends to be very, very sensitive up in that higher frequency. And so I, I have to imagine that, you know, when you're at an event, you're going to get a lot more of that stuff, you know, hitting off walls and, and, and that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering if, if uh, just plugging that, did, did you, have you done any tests with a road link plugged into that H2 to see if that makes any difference? No, I, di I didn't get the chance, but I should do it. I should just go to a noisy place and, and try that. Yeah, that'd be an interesting test, and I, I don't know if you're going to get different results or not, but it, 
it would sure be interesting to see if if it mm. if different for sure. Because again, those almost all the cameras I've used. Bad preamps. At least with 3.5. Yeah, bad preamps. At least when they have 3.5 millimeter inputs. Even even those with XLR, yeah, not not necessarily amazing, but yeah, that, that's the challenge there, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. We have uh, let's see a couple other people. Carlos, how you doing there? Can you hear us? And then we also have Christian there. Christian, how are you doing today? Can you hear us? We're not hearing you right now. Looks like you're out enjoying some sunshine, though. <laughs> Very good. Let me... Uh... Let me just pop over and see if we've missed any questions on the other. Oh, Malte, there you were. You were on the Q&A there. Sorry we missed you there. Glad you could join via webcam, though. <laughs> All right. And then we did have one other question here. Let's just run through this really quickly here. This is from Human Being. If you want to hold a Zoom H1 to use as a man-on-the-street handheld recorder, how can I minimize the sounds it will pick up from my hand movement? Also, when recording yourself inside, would it be better to use the ATR3350 or the Zoom H1? Oops, let me switch back the camera here. Okay. Uh, two questions. We'll start with the first one. Handheld, um, minimize the sounds it will pick up from your hand movement. That is, uh, that's a tough one with the H1 because the H1 doesn't really have a suspension system. It's just kind of the mics mounted right there in the the, the kind of the head of the, the unit itself. I've got this one here. So, you know, there's nothing that isolates it from hand movement. So I think in that case, um, there's obviously, I mean, there, there's be, quel be careful. <laughs> um, just be really careful and, and, and if you keep a firm grip. That helps a little bit. You know, I don't know how much this is going to help, but keep a firm grip. Don't, as soon as you start rubbing fingers, that's where you start getting some. But if you can just keep a really tight, firm grip, that tends to help a little bit. What's interesting about these two, um, and that's true for both the TAS, TASCAM, I've got a, uh, got the DR05 from TASCAM here as well as a Zoom. Both of these are kind of the same in that, in that regard. They're, they're using these stereo microphones in an XY pattern. And um, I think really that was originally designed for musicians and, and being able to kind of, sometimes you want the sound of the room to kind of be part of it. and um, I think a lot of people misunderstand stereo, but any, in any case, um, if you are using this as a handheld mic, there are, there are many cases, if you're interviewing someone, for example, you may want to orient it so that one of the mics is picking you up and the other mic is picking the other person up. So if I hold it between me like this, you can see one would be pointed at me, one would be pointed at the interviewer or interviewee. So that's one thing you can do as well because that will minimize any movement you have to do with the mic, first of all, because you'll want to be holding it pretty steady between the two of you. And uh, that way the mic has the each of the mics pointed at you directly. So then there are plenty of post-processing things you can do as well so that when, you know, if one person is on, you know, talking for a while, you may want to mute the other track during that time period or at least, you know, pull back the gain on that track during that time period. So there are some things you can do on that front. So I hope that Hope that helps for, helps you a little bit. Um, second question was, when recording yourself inside, would it be better to use the ATR3350 or the Zoom? The ATR3350 is a, that was one of the first uh, kind of cheap, it's like a $20 lavalier mic that I inter or that I reviewed on, on YouTube. And it's okay. I, I think it's, the ATR3350 I think is, um, it's not the most amazing lavalier mic, but the reason I kind of put it out there was I was, it was mainly for people that are doing their first recording and are relying currently on their camera's recorder, you know, the camera's built-in mic. And I think it's better than that in most cases. So, <laughs> um, but I think that's worth an experiment. I would go into the room that you're going to record in and try both of them. Try directly with the H1 and the 3350. It's really going to depend on the room. If you've got actually a pretty clean room, I'm going to guess that the H1 may sound better, if it, especially if you can close curtains and things of that nature to kind of minimize the sound from bouncing off walls and things of that nature. But um, 
Otherwise, it may be that the 3350 works a little bit better. So I just want to give that a try. Absolutely. Can you hear me now? Let's see. Are you able to hear me now? Who's talking? Is that you, Christian? Yeah, that's me. That's you. Welcome. Glad you could Hey, hello. I, I figured out how to get the sound to work on this. <laughs> this is my tell first us, time using the hang Tell us a little bit about where you're at. What kind of, uh, kind of things you're doing as far as sound's concerned? Well, it's it's just a, a kind of a basic beginning thing. I've been an actor for 35 years, and I've noticed that uh, a lot of these people that do films today, they don't spend any time or money on um, sound equipment, and they just do a really crappy job, and the end product is like, oh, it's good that the sound sucks a little bit. Uh, so my acting has done real well. Uh, pardon me, I'm, I'm pushing a cart down the street, so I... But anyway, my acting is doing real well, and I decided to go and just buy a, a bunch of equipment and just try to start providing a little bit better sound. Um, I've been working in radio for 35 years also, so sound is just really second nature to me. Uh, so I bought an F8, I uh, bought some Rode mics, um, uh, some cardioids, and just kind of set myself up, and I've been just taking your lessons online, which is just absolutely incredible. Uh, and uh, take it off to the first job uh, this coming Sunday. Very good. Very good. And what's uh, yeah. what's the setting for that uh, that piece you'll be doing on Sunday? Uh, it's it's actually a group that's called um, Right Act Go, and I found them on YouTube, and they're doing everything uh, sound wise just off of their uh, camcorder, off the top of the camcorder. And it's not, it just, it's awful. You can't even understand what the actors are saying. But I did notice the actors were really good. I mean, they were very, very good quality acting. Uh, but just the sound, I mean, it doesn't even sync up at YouTube right. It was just completely terrible. So I contacted them and let them know that um, I wanted to practice with this equipment a little bit. And I would come in and help them with their sound, uh, which they said was, was great. But I'd only be able to do that for free the first couple of times because, of course, I got to pay for the equipment, which they also said that's fine too. They can get up a little bit of a fund to to pay for it. Uh, so I'll basically just be a um, you know just a work in progress. Uh, I'm sure I'll be pretty successful at being able to provide you know sensational on set sound uh, at you know an affordable price to these guys. It's not really about the money to me because I my acting does um, does me real well. Yeah. Uh, it's just mostly I want to be able to provide to the people that don't have the ability to get good sound on their sets to, to, to be able to have that good sound. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it'll be great to hear what your experience is. I think uh, you touch on a couple of things that are really important, um, you know, depending on what kind of project you're working on. One thing I have found that, uh, that may be helpful, first of all, doing gigs is a great way to get money for gear <laughs> to, to build up your kit. Um, I would, for, and it sounds like Christian, you're headed this direction already. But I would highly recommend for those of you that are doing sound for other projects, um, that you be careful about doing it for free. I, I understand, you know, there, there's a time and a place for that, but it's also often very helpful instead if you can to do, you know, say offer. I'll do a deeply discounted job for you. So you know, it's always nice to, to have them have some skin in the game, and I'm not. You know, I, obviously there are, there are cases where this doesn't apply, but, um, it, you know, and again, it sounds like, Christian, you're headed that direction. And I've had plenty of gigs where, in the end, what they ended up providing me was they built out my kit a little bit more, so I was, in, you know, in a better shape for future jobs as well. So definitely something to consider. Right. Now, that's, uh, this first one for them is mostly because their sound is just so terrible. I want them to be able to see what they could get. And I know they can come up with a stipend for me the next time, so... Yeah. As being an actor and doing it, uh, I don't do free gigs when I'm acting, so there's no reason for me to be doing free gigs when I'm doing sound, because that yeah. just hurts all sound people and all actors. We all need to make the money. you got yeah. a bunch of guys out there doing it for free. Eh, that hurts the industry, and I'm not here to hurt the industry. I'm here to help. Yeah, yeah, and even even aside from you know whether it hurts the industry or not, it actually... T um, the biggest benefit I see from it is it, if they just pay, even if it's just a little money, if it's 25, 50, 100 bucks, whatever it is, having them get a little bit of skin in the game changes their perspective as well because now they are invested in getting good sound as well. You know what I'm saying? And if they, 
if you know, it just depends on the client, but I just find that's something to, to keep in mind. It sounds like you definitely got a healthy attitude on that, and that's I hope that works out well. We'd actually be interested in hearing how it works out and what what lessons you learned in that process there. Oh, absolutely. Next time we do this, uh, I'll have some more information for you. Good deal. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you for that, Christian. Uh, is it Ekide? Is it, is that how you say your name? We can see you talking, but can't hear you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, still no sound here on this end. You're unmuted now. Huh. Unfortunately, still no sound coming this way. Apologize for that. Um, if you, yeah, see if you can. If there's anything you can change on that end, there. I've got you unmuted here. It looks like uh, you're. In terms of this, I have a little mixer over here that I keep looking at. I can actually adjust uh, the output level here, but I'm not hearing anything. All right. Well, I'll tell you, you got your pirate hat on. Nice work there. Uh, Ken, you said you mentioned that you might have uh, another question there. Uh, yeah, you've been uh, pounding on lavaliers pretty good here. Uh, <laughs> what, what I'm, I got the lavalier because some of what I'm going to be doing is classic uh, chalk and talk. You know, I'm d doing algebra, I'll be teaching, and I'll be writing on a whiteboard, mm -hmm. and I'll be tending to move back and forth two feet, and I don't have, I'm a solo person, so a, a fixed a uh, shotgun, is that going to have a wide enough cone to catch me moving around and turning and talking towards the blackboard from time to time? No, and I think that's a perfect case for a lavalier. I think on it. Yeah, that's a perfect case. And again, like I say, I, I give them a hard time. And the only reason I do that is I think most people, when they first come, they just assume a lavalier is how I get the most amazing professional sound. And you know, there's no doubt professionals use lavalier microphones all the time. Um, they almost, you know, if you're on a on the set of any sort of TV show or movie show, they're gonna they're going to have everyone loved up, but they're also going to have a boom, and they're going to do everything in their effort to get that boom to work right. Because <laughs> okay. that's going to produce better sound in most cases. So, but yeah, no, you're, that's the perfect situation where I think a lavalier makes all sorts of sense, and it's probably the right tool for the job, no question. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Hello? Hey, we can hear you. Yeah, but I have a little problem. Uh, if I use this mic, uh, when you talk, you will, you will have uh, some echo because I'm I'm using these headphones. Okay. So I'm sorry for that. No problem. I'll be quiet. Mm, I just want to say hello to two of you. I'm, I'm talking from Spain, uh, from Barcelona. Uh, I'm not English. My English is uh, is is not so good, but uh, I'll try my best. Um, well, I'm working on a YouTube channel. Uh, I have two two talents in a in in an office, uh, talking about making reviews about uh, Android devices and smartphones mainly and. Okay, I have some problems uh, because they, they are in a big office and there is uh, a lot of echo because uh, we are using two uh, omnidirectional lavalier mics. Um, we, have, we have many echo problems in the office because it's really, really big and we don't have... Uh, Curtains or or things that could uh, help on on the echo problem. So I figure I I I will have to to buy cardioid uh, cardioid lavalier mics for improve the the, the, the echo problem. But uh, in this in this moment we can we cannot uh, use that kind of mics because. Uh, because it's not a solution for us now. What we are doing is to try to improve the sound uh, with aud audition, Adobe Audition, right? Trying to 
to work on the on the on the noise from from the camera because my two talents uh, are very different and and they are on the same table so when one talk the mic of the other one capturing all the sound so all the time the the preamp of the camera is uh, turning up and down the volume the the input gain of the camera so it's really difficult to manage that audio uh, because it's all time when when both of them are uh, no talking the camera turns uh, the gain input level so high and you can hear all the noise of the room so it's, it's an annoying problem uh, that, we are working yeah that's a tough one that's a tough one because uh, so the auto gain or automatic gain control, it's called different things. I think here it's called, on a Zoom H1, it's called auto level. Um, they all have their own little flavor of it, it but it's the same thing. And, and the, tr the trick with those is that they're not smart enough to know, hey, this is a lull in the conversation, and it's OK that everything's quiet. Um, I, I would say, if there's any, do you know if there's any way to turn that off on that particular camera? The camera we are using. You're asking for the camera, right? Yeah, yeah sorry, it's, very difficult, it's very difficult for me to change between putting on the, the, the earphones and plugging in and playing out, but I will try. <laughs> uh, we are using a Canon 70D. Oh, okay. We are using a Canon 70D. Before, a couple of months ago, uh, we are using a 650, maybe, or 600. Yep. Uh, yep. Obviously, obviously, we are... Uh, we are we are improving that uh, the sound part of the of the recording with this camera. Also. I mean, this camera works a lot of, uh, very well, better than the previous one. Yeah. But it's not enough. Yeah. We we can use uh, we have uh, two Zoom H1. We have two two of them, but our problem is uh, we have to make it easy. Because we have to make it an easy way, an easy way, as, as easy as possible. Because we are we are uh, uploading a, a one video a, a day. So we are we are publishing one video a day, and it has to be a fast way and an easy way. Because uh, I am the only one who knows some things about audio, and I cannot uh, work all this with them. So. It has to be the easiest way to to manage the audio. Yeah, so that makes it's sense. It's difficult to improve when you have to make it really, really easy for them. So it's a problem. We cannot use the Zoom H1 because when when I want to put the two audios together, we ha we ha I, I have problems because because uh, one of them talked so loud and the other one talked really, really, uh, no loud, really, really loud, uh, or low, I mean low. And it's a really, really difficult problem to me to, to put the two, two together and in the same, uh, to attach with the video. I mean, so difficult problem <laughs> for not using cardioid or boom mics for one and another. Uh, it's really difficult for me. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, no, I, I what you're saying. So it, there are a couple of things to consider. It sounds like what I'm hearing from you is that you don't really have time to do post-production, so you don't have a lot of time to go into Adobe Audition or Audacity and really kind of tweak the levels and get everything sounding just right because you're producing once a day, which is a pretty hectic schedule as it is. So I understand that. Um, uh, one thing you can do is with some of these recorders, such as, uh, well, no, because if you have two 3.5 millimeter inputs, it's going to be difficult. On those as well. Here, in theory, <laughs> what you could do is live mix. So this would be a perfect situation where you would live mix, where you'd have a different mic for each person, and you'd be able to control their gain and, and the faders for each of those people separately, and then take a line out from whatever mixer you're using to your camera. So that would be kind of the, you know, if we're talking TV, live TV, and stuff like that, that's typically what they're doing. And that would be the ideal solution. Of course, that's going to cost some money. Um, so there's some price involved there. Um, that's where 
that's where things become a little bit more challenging and especially if the microphones that you'll be using have 3.5 millimeter plugs because I don't know of any great audio gear that has more than one 3.5 millimeter input. I saw one from, I think it's Beach Tech makes one that I actually come to think of it that may be one worth looking at for you. Let me just pull that up here real quick and see. I'll show you that. Um, go to our friends at B&H Photo. Some more information. Uh, I think I think the, the best solution for us is to buy XLR mics and use uh, use a Zoom H6. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I add something? Absolutely, do. Um, I do some podcasts on my channel, kind of with my friends, and what we do is we hook up multiple um, XLR mics, and uh, we actually use the uh, H6 with that, and it works perfect. It's just amazing the quality of the audio and all. It's just having the mic kind of either boomed or held handheld is less convenient than having a laugh clipped on. That's that's the only drawback I see. Great input. Yeah, mm, yeah I'm totally great. agree with, yeah. with you. Yep, that's one. I, I let me just show you here. There was one. Um, I believe it was Beach Tech. It's just DXA pocket. Yeah, this is the one here. I don't know if you can. You guys all see that? Okay. Uh, so this is what we have here. It's about you know it's 107 dollars US, but it does have uh, two mono quarter inch quarter eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter inputs and a stereo 3.5 millimeter input. So that's one of the the few devices I've seen that actually has both of those where you can actually live mix and then you feed a line out to the camera. So if you're looking for a budget option, that's one to consider. I can't vouch for its quality. It seems to be get, it's getting decent reviews. Um, but if you're on a real, you know, kind of the production schedule that you're on, which is pretty, pretty hectic and pretty straightforward, <laughs> that one, that one might be worth looking at if that's helpful for you. Uh, it's really cool to to see that, uh, but I don't know if that could manage manage uh, in a right way the auto gain level because, as as I said, uh, I have two talents with different uh, level of voices, and it always have a problem for me. Uh, so my idea was to to use two Cardiot lavalier mics, XLR. Obviously, and attach them to an uh, Zoom H, uh, H6, maybe, and then the output of the H6 uh, to the camera. Uh, obviously, uh, configuring the camera in, in manual game. Because I have that problem, one talent, too loud voice, and the other one is too weak voice. Uh, trying to tell in, in some way. So, that is. This is the, the worst situation that I could have. So it's a really river uh, office uh, with glass windows, big glass windows in one hand, and the other has some really big space. Um, I have the worst situation for the echo. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to try to, to find uh, a good solution for decrease the echo and also, easy for them, for not need to me to manage the audio in post production. So I have to find a balance in easy way, <laughs> easy job, and good quality. So I don't know if I, I explain. That makes sense. It definitely makes sense. I, I would, um, yeah. When you get when you when you are mix when you have some sort of mixing device, if you do go with the H6, turning off the auto gain is a great idea. Is there any reason you don't turn off the auto gain now? With your current setup, not turning uh, turning off the auto gain because uh, you're asking to me for turning off, turning off, right? Okay, so I don't turn it off because I will uh, if I turn it off, I have to adjust the the gain too loud for not saturate the song with the talent who has the loudest uh, voice. So I have so uh, so different voice and if I use the auto gain off 
I have to set up the, the gain level too low. Too, too low. Uh, so it's a problem f uh, with the kind of mics I'm using. I'm using the Sony ECM CS3 level omnidirectional uh, mics. Um, it's a really cheap mics and really they are stereo mics so that in my own view that increased the echo problem because is uh, is taking sound is taking uh, echo from very uh, two directions is so that's a pro the word yeah that makes sense um, that definitely makes sense as to why why you're doing it yeah that's that's tough those auto game as you've learned never work well and I think uh, what you're talking about and just like Ahmed said, that, you know, H6 with a couple of lavalier mics. I would be careful with uh, cardioid lavalier mics. They can they can be really difficult to work with. I, I understand why you're aiming to use those. Um, they have, in most of the cases that I've used them, they sound very thin. They sound like someone's talking on a telephone, like an old style telephone. Um, they have that very kind of mid rangey nasally kind of sound to them in most cases. So be careful with that. Um, I think Ahmed, you said you were using the giant squids before and had pretty good experience with those. Yeah, giant squids are quite good actually. Uh, I I had the version one with the different kind of connectors. I think they've redone them now. Yeah. Didn't try those though. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Uh, for future hang hangouts, I I will try to explain better my situation because I'm. Uh, I'm not the best explanation right now, but I, I will try to, to give you some examples and some links to f for you to, to see the videos I'm I, I'm uploading to YouTube. So in a minute you can you, you will you will be able to realize the situation I'm trying to explain. So when you see it it's really easy to, to realize that the problems are there. So <laughs> Yeah, sounds great. Go ahead, and, and I'd be happy to, if you send those links over to me, that'd be great. I'd be happy to take a look at those and a listen and, and see where we're at there. All right, we're a little bit over time, but let's see. I don't see any other questions out in the, uh, the Q&A panel, so I think we're good. Has anyone else wanted to cover anything else before we wrap up for today? Are you going to do something on lighting at some point? <laughs> Ah, glad you asked. I am going to do something on lighting at some point. I am actually probably going to team up to do that one rather than try to do that one on my own. Um, okay. I have a friend whose name is Levi Whitney. He's a He's been doing film, corporate film, for about 10 years, so he's got a little more experience at that. He's got some great connections with various lighting company, you know, manufacturers of different lighting gear. And we're trying to do a broad a broad view of things because we want to be able to, to meet all the different budget levels. We recognize some people don't have a lot of money for, for film, you know, for lights. Um, and there's also, I think, very different considerations for on location. Like if you're doing something on, on location with a very small budget, wow, that's a that's a serious challenge. Um, sure. So, so we'll have to go kind of go across the spectrum and try and cover all the different things. But really, I think what we'll probably focus on the very most is the kind of the fundamental principles of lighting and difference between hard and soft light, how to get hard and soft light when you want to use each of them, things of that nature. So yeah, we're definitely headed that direction. So that's going to probably going to be a couple more months before we get there though. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that though. Yeah. Well, great. And I, and I hope, uh, when do you leave for China to start your project? It's probably in a month. Um, but um, your your videos, just want to thank you for them. It was really fantastic. Like these uh, hours were very well invested. Thank the you. audio videos were Thanks. fantastic. Thanks very much. Well, thanks. We're looking forward to hearing back from you when you... Uh, sure. Maybe you can, while well, you're in China, I don't know if you'll have time for that, but it'd be, it'd be great to hear Absolutely. how things are going. Yeah, the connection might be a bit choppy, but I'm definitely going to be... I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that that soon, but um, there's also going to be this whole post-production thing that I don't really know exactly how I'm going to be doing that, but yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. All right. Good deal. Looking forward to it. Ken, sure. thanks for joining us today. And I, again, I apologize. Is it Ejide? I'm not sure how we pronounce your name. Hopefully I said it not too wrong. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, you and, and congratulate for your great job and keep going. Thanks, we do. And Ahmed, thanks very much. Pleasure to Thank meet you. you in person this time.
Thank you. I'm looking forward to your uh, light course because uh, that would be very interesting. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We'll talk again in the near future. Take care.